Welcome everybody to Jar Your Mind. My name is Joey and today we are going to read, I'm going to read just a few pages and from there we can talk a little more about what I found in this book. Okay, letting go, page 240, um, chapter transformation, health. Okay, the average person is preoccupied with the body, its functioning, performance, appearance, and survival. The average mind is beleaguered with worries, fears of sickness, suffering, disease, and death. Therefore, the mind sets about defending the body in a great variety of ways. This leads to over-attention to diet, weight, exercise, and the health of the environment. With such inner tension, by the end of the day, the average person frequently feels like a victim, drained, empty, and exhausted. One consequence of this preoccupation with the body is self-consciousness. Within the field of awareness, the, bo the body's presence is prominent, and there is a mental fixation with what is doing what it is doing, its whereabouts and movements, its survival, the attitudes and approval of other persons toward the body, its appearance and behavior. Underlying all of this concern is the unconscious equation, I am a body. This is a very limited level of consciousness. In fact, in the spiritual world, this is called being unconscious because it is a false identification due to a marked narrowing of awareness. It is like wearing blinders. It is like having a pimple on the nose and thinking that the whole world now revolves around that pimple and going through the day with that pimple most prominent in our mind. Be aware of how much energy is drained by this constant preoccupation with the body. Our mind has been continuously programmed with a countless variety of belief systems about the body, what it needs, what will be good for it, and its infinite number of vulnerabilities. This leads to constant preoccupations with all kinds of health preventive measures, including health food fads, the endless reading of labels for potentially poisonous ingredients, the fear of being near someone smoking a cigarette, the fear of dust and pollens and all of the supposed contaminants of the environment. There is an obsession with the offsetting of all these dangers by various countermeasures. As we have seen from previous discussions, these vulnerabilities are merely the product of the mind and the body will react to what is held in mind. This was demonstrated in our discussion of multiple personalities where the body reflected in each instant what that particular personality and mind believed. As we begin letting go of all these fears, canceling the belief systems and reaffirming that our true self is infinite and not subject to limitations, we move into a higher state of health, wellness, and vital energy. A helpful way to phrase it to ourselves is, I am an infinite being not subject to blank. Fill in the blank. I am an infinite being not subject to blank. We put into the blank space whatever disease or substance that the mind has been programmed to see as a possible danger for us. After letting go of the endless variety of bodily fears, concerns, and belief systems, physical illness begins to resolve automatically. There is an increase in the feeling of aliveness and personal freedom. In the state of total surrender, the body is barely perceived at all. It is only peripherally in awareness, and there is no preoccupation with it. It functions effortlessly, smoothly, and with very little attention. A surrendered person can eat anything or go anywhere and is no longer subject to fears of contaminants, pollutants, drafts, germs, electromagnetic frequencies, carpet smoke, dust, animal dander, poison ivy, pollen, or food dyes. Our perception of the body shifts and it now seems to be like a puppet or a pet. This shift of perception is from I am body to I have a body. It becomes progressively obvious that the body is not experiencing itself at all. On the contrary, it is the mind that is experiencing the body. Without the mind, the body cannot be perceived at all. The arm cannot experience its armness. Only the mind can experience the armness. This, of course, is the very basis of anesthesia. When the mind is asleep, the body has no sensation. It slowly dawns on us that, in fact, the body doesn't have any sensation. Only the mind is capable of that function. 
This is a very important shift in consciousness because we now, because now the preoccupation is not with the body and defending it. The focus of attention now shifts to the mind, which is where the greater power lies. As we shift our thoughts, feelings, and perceptions, we begin to notice that the body follows suit. We recognize that people are not really responding to our body at all, but to our inner attitudes and our energy state and our level of awareness. One day it dawns on us that everyone and everything in the world are responding to our level of consciousness, our intention, and to the inner feeling we have about them. We register the magnetism of saintly people such as Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, and Mahatma Gandhi. We see that they are beloved not because of their physical appearance, but because of the inner radiance of love and peace they emanate. The shift of focus from the physical level to the level of consciousness begins to bring rapid results. The persistent surrender of negative feelings and attitudes means that the associated guilt is also being constantly relinquished. A consciousness that is not guilt-ridden tends no longer to attract disease. In the unconscious, guilt requires punishment and sickness with its attendant pain and suffering as the mind's most frequent means of self-retaliation. This self-retaliation may take the form of an accident, cold, attack of the flu, arthritis, or any of the multiple diseases that the mind has invented. These diseases take epidemic forms due to television and media publicity. When a prominent figure shares with the me- with the when a prominent figure shares with the public some serious illness, there is a sudden jump in the incidence of that illness. The unconscious grabs hold of a disease and utilizes it to settle the score. With the constant surrender of inner guilt, there is less and less of a score to be settled. Therefore, a person who is free of negativity and guilt tends to be free of disease and suffering. The healing can be dramatic. There was the case, for example, of a magazine publisher who was in a hopeless state of advanced multiple sclerosis. The medical profession had done what it could and had given her up as a terminal hopeless case. At that point, she came upon a technique of relinquishing guilt by studying the workbook A Course in Miracles. In working with this home study course, which consists of contemplating exactly one short lesson a day for 365 days, she began to undo all of her guilt and resentment through the mechanism of forgiveness. Of forgiveness, By constantly forgiving and undoing the negative feelings and therefore undoing her inner guilt, the disease of multiple sclerosis reversed itself. As of this writing, she has been recovered for years and is in radiant, glowing, healthy, happy, and happy with her life. Health and well-being, then, are generally the automatic consequence of letting go of guilt and other negativities, as well as the letting go of our resistance to the positive states of health and well-being. Through the surrender mechanism, the whole gamut of illnesses can be resolved into wellness. As was said earlier, there may be uncommon cases in which illness or infirmity continues unabated due to unknown factors such as karmic proclivities. Continual suffer, sur- continual surrender brings healing at the level of inner being so that even while the body appears to suffer limitation and others may see it as tragic, the person is at peace and radiates an inner well-being that uplifts others. Through surrender at great depth, such persons have let go of self-pity, guilt, and resistance to life circumstances. They have transcended the view that their illness is a barrier to personal happiness and see it as a vehicle of blessing to others. In recent years, public examples of this phenomenon have included the late John, Pope John Paul II, who approached his unremitting Parkinson's disease as a spiritual opportunity to become one with and even to take on the suffering of others. The most important pa- the most important part of that passage to me was regarding letting go of us feeling like we are our bodies. And that is what is driving fear right now is that we are afraid of sickness. We are afraid of disease. We are afraid of a virus. We're afraid for other people and their health and losing them because we are really 
wrapped up in our physical bodies. And if we would let go and realize that we are all mind and energy and universal and everlasting, then there would be nothing to fear. And that control of our fears will be impossible once we realize that we are limitless. And the faith in that and the faith in knowing that brings us all together and connects us. And right now, everything is being disconnected. We're being disconnected. And I keep talking about this on this channel, but everything is being disconnected. And it is up to each and every one of us to reconnect with ourselves by going within, to reconnect with our community, to reconnect with our family, to reconnect with friends, to reconnect with people that we don't necessarily agree with, to reconnect everybody because we are all one and that will raise our consciousness and that will raise our health and that will raise and overcome any any obstacles that we have and right now it's like we're living still in this very dualistic energy system of good and bad of right and wrong of alternative news and mainstream news of republican and democrat and you know all of this and we have to realize that we if we come together and see this all as something that we're in together then there is nothing to fear and we can overcome it in the blink of an eye and we just have to choose to do that each of us choose to do that and then it will be so and it just starts with ourselves it all starts with ourselves. We can't, we can't force anything on anybody. All we can do is be at peace with ourselves and know that we are more than our bodies and realize the God within us and realize the energy within us and use it for power and use it for good and know your power and know that you control your outcomes and you control the screen in front of you and what you see as Neville talks about everything is you pushed out everything everything is you pushed out so what do you want to see in the world and do you want to be healthy in body just state I am healthy in body I am healthy in body but I am not my body I am not my body and that releases you from any fear any fear at all any circumstance you will not be affected. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have not yet, please subscribe to this channel. Like and share and let me know what do you think about this subject. Do you feel healthy in body? Do you feel like you are your body? Or know that you are more than your body? Do you feel like you're on one side or the other? Do you feel like we can come together and connect Leave your comments below. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next video.